Welcome back, folks, to the Mel Wright Show. This is episode 208. We've got a great special guest. I've been looking forward to this conversation. We've got Ed Carey, founder and CEO of Audience Town. Ed, would you like to introduce yourself quickly to the listeners and viewers? Certainly. Thanks, Jonathan. Thanks, Robert. Uh, my name is Ed Carey. I'm, I guess, broadcasting live around the world on Facebook in real time, which is really exciting. I come to you from uh, Newark, New Jersey, uh, which is New Jersey's largest city just uh, outside of New York City, uh, also known as Brick City. And um, if you don't know, it's uh, become a hotbed of early stage technology startups. So um, we were very proud to be here and I'm very proud and happy, delighted to be on the show. And Robert, you're going to be impressed with this, Robert. I'm on holiday. I'm, I'm broadcasting from the co-working facility in Mount Chastner City. I'm, the, I'm at the heart of new age fault here, Robert. Wow. <laughs> the, with the crystals and the uh, Peruvian sh shaman, I'm, I'm in the centre of it, Robert. Wow. Jonathan, you have to explain. Where is it? Where well, is at, it? It's Northern California. Uh, wow. um, it's um, it's uh, it's a, it's got a bit of a reputation. So if I kind of meditate out, folks, you understand. I, I take off my beads for the show, but I just put them back on because. You oh, I, thought, I thought I thought you would be impressed, Robert. Would you like to introduce yourself to the new listeners and viewers? If I must, uh, my name is Robert Newman. I'm uh, I'm uh, an SEO and inbound marketing specialist that has uh, well over a decade of uh, real estate, residential real estate specific experience. I founded a company. I've, uh, I've, I've just go to my website. I have a lot of experience inside the industry in a very unique way. You'll find it on inboundrem.com. I have articles to help educate you on real estate technology platforms and what you should be using and blah blah blah. Yeah, you you need to get your mic a bit closer to you, Robert, because it's or increase the volume because you're a little bit shallow. There you go. Hello. So, that's a lot better. <laughs> so right. <laughs> Okay. So, Ed, now to start off with, can you give us an introduction to Audience Town and why you started the company? Sure, happy to. Um, so, I am the founder and CEO of Audience Town. We are a data driven advertising platform uh, specifically for the real estate industry. We can, I'm sure we'll talk about that during the podcast, but uh, this is uh, the uh, origination of the business is kind of fun. Um, I had spent a career in digital media and uh, what is called advertising technology. And I had been working with very large marketing brands and very large media companies and publishers on using data and software to power their paid advertising. I'd worked at big brands like the New York Times and uh, then other small uh, high growth startup companies that you have not heard of, um, learning all about, you know, sort of modern marketing. And then uh, a few years ago, my wife became a real estate agent here in suburban New Jersey. And um, her regional office manager started talking to their office of agents all about data-driven advertising and how they wanted to target relevant young couples in Brooklyn, New York, specifically to move to the suburbs, a pretty common uh, immigration pattern in, in, in metropolitan areas. Um, so they were very eager to sort of update their online advertising strategies to be more targeted and more efficient. Um, and my wife called me and it, it really was an aha moment. I, I think founders and, and cre creators talk about an aha moment, but it was that for me. It was a phone call. I was walking home. She said, it's the funniest thing. You know, my manager is talking all about the stuff that you do. And, you know, I'd been sort of on the lookout for a large vertical industry that wasn't using all of these techniques to maybe start a business in. And um, it, it was an aha moment. It hit me like a Mack truck. And I went to go talk to her manager. I said, what? Why, why are you talking about these things um, to, your, to your office of agents? I, I thought all this data and all this tech was just for, you know, big brands like Procter & Gamble and ESPN and Ford. You know, why are you talking about it here in suburban New Jersey? He said, well, you know, these are all the reasons. And I, I said, hey, how's it going? He's like, well, it's, you know, it's kind of hard. You know, I, I haven't been able to do it. Um, I called a bunch of vendors and, 
and I asked them if I could do it and they all wanted a lot of money to do it and it was just too expensive. So, you know, really high barriers to entry. I thought, wow, if I could just sort of actually make these data-driven ad products um, that I'm really familiar with and that are changing advertising for the big companies, if I could, if I could help real estate agents and brokerages and really the entire industry of builders and multifamily companies and really anybody who's got property to sell or rent, then, then maybe that's a business. So that's how, that's how it started. Um, I started talking to companies sort of in, in stealth. You know, I was working in New York City um, as an executive at uh, a few companies, um, startup companies. And um, I started talking to real estate people and companies and I did a lot of research and um, when I, when I uncovered a, a research report that showed me that real estate advertising is in fact the third largest advertising category on the web, um, you know, it blew my mind. I, I didn't realize that as sort of a hidden, um, hidden, hidden uh, statistic. And so at that point I, I decided to, you know, hey, start calling people that I'd worked with and said, hey, you know, there's a huge industry, um, you know, real estate's enormous and they spend a lot on advertising and from what I can figure out, they're having a hard time doing all the new modern stuff. So I think we can start a business here. And so lo and behold, here, here we are. Yeah, it's a bit of eye opener, that survey you mentioned, because I read it and it was a bit, it kind of stirred my interest. I'm going to throw it over to Robert, because I'm sure Robert's got some um, detailed questions to ask you. Over to you, Robert. Well, I don't know if I do or not. Let's start, let's start at the top level. So, so you've you've started this entrepreneurial company and and you're using you're using words that i've heard a lot like targeting your audience and you you mentioned a very specific scenario in new york and the only way that i know to arrive at that well one of the most common ways i know to arrive at the destination of targeting the couple moving from new york to new jersey is going to actually be using facebook as the marketing platform so in order to target somebody down to that, that granular level and get in front of them, either that or you're going within like an old school list company, yeah. uh, one or the other in order to actually get your hands on the targeted audience. So I'm somewhat curious. Uh, there's a lot of platforms out there using Facebook, like Yolopo is one that comes to my mind that's also in a very similar stage of growth that you are. Um, so what is... Like, what are you doing? Do you know Yolopo? And if so, what are you doing differently? And like, like, how is that all like, because they're doing an entire website and backend or is that what you're doing? Cause there's no, I'm not seeing, I don't know if you're in development for a software platform or if you're just doing a more like robust marketing service. Like I'm, I'm not sure what it is you're really doing. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's, I think that's fair. Well, let me, um, let me, uh, describe some consumer behaviors, and then uh, I'll use some uh, some some jargon, and then what I think uh, about Facebook. Okay. So the consumer behavior is that um, you know people are spending eleven mil uh, eleven hours uh, a day with media. Um, eleven hours. That's half the day. That's consuming television content. Um, obviously, smartphones. That includes email, reading websites, apps, just about anything. That's, that's 11 hours a day. So half of our lives consuming media. I and mean, we can ponder that philosophically later. There's lots to ponder, ponder there. Uh, there are 8 billion uh, digital connected devices in the United States, um, sort of conduits to all of this media content. Um, and about half of that time, um, is spent, uh, you know, digitally with social media. And um, when you think about real estate in market consumers, they're only spending about, um, they're spending about, uh, they're spending about half their time with social media. This is just real estate audiences and half outside of social media. So, you know, my bottom line on that is Facebook is not the web. Um, it is not where people spend most of their time. Um, it has, along with Google, as a company, created fantastic, dominant tools to make it easy to advertise there. So, you know, Robert, when you think, well, what else is there? It, it, it's, it's, it's natural that you think that way. Google and Facebook. Facebook is a $67 billion a year ad sales media company, and they make it very easy to target audiences granularly at scale and they're very good at it and so is Google but it's not where people spend most of their media time and so 
most of their media time is spent across multiple devices, including their television and a lot of other things. I mean, do you read anything other than Facebook? I know I do. I know, uh, you know, I don't think anybody on this call is under 40, but uh, if you were, you would be spending a lot less time with Facebook, maybe more with Instagram, but you're spending time on apps and, uh, and you're spending time with media companies like the New York Times or blogs or Inman or um, mail, right? I mean, there's a lot of ways to consume content and to find people across the entire ecosystem where, another statistic, 31 trillion ads are for sale every day. Um, how do you find all those people and how do you find them at the right time? You, you need data to do it. So Facebook is big. It is not the only place to find audiences. And in the housing category, you know, they settled with the FHA um, this year, which means they don't allow a lot of really, I would say, imperative targeting parameters uh, on their platform anymore. Um, there are millions of companies, literally millions, that plug into Facebook. Um, anybody can do it. It's, it's really not that hard. There's different status of how you can do it. So there's the one you mentioned, Robert. I, I haven't heard of them, but there's actually a lot in real estate alone. There's even more in the general marketing category. Anybody can walk up to Facebook and buy ads. Like it's not hard to do. Facebook was built as a self-serve platform. So anybody can do it. It's sort of a commoditized thing to be able to do. And so in real estate specifically, it's gotten tricky because you can't target by age anymore. So if you are a large brokerage or a, a multifamily owner and you want to go target people, you know, who can afford a half a million dollar home, you can't target people, you know, 25 and above. You have to target 18 plus adults. So that, that's just one example. So it's gotten harder to advertise on Facebook. And some of the, the tools that we're talking about using are called um, sort of programmatic advertising. So programmatic advertising is sort of the, the category that I'm talking about here. It is how most advertising you see is served and delivered, including on Facebook and Google. It's auction-based advertising. Think of the way the stock market works. You have equities that come up for sale in real time every second, and you use data, hedge funds use data to decide in real time, you know, which stocks to buy and sell. That's how advertising now works. And digital is bigger than TV when it comes to ad spend and data is powering that and programmatic advertising is the protocol. So these are all, um, I don't want to overwhelm with all these jargony things, but this is how digital advertising is done on Facebook and off Facebook. And we're trying to bridge these, these technologies, which are now probably 10 years uh, in, 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 um, in market. Um, we're trying to bridge these things to the real estate world so that there are other media platforms other than Zillow, Google, and Facebook to, to find consumers at the right time. I got you. Okay. So, so I guess my next question is, so I've just, you've taught me something today for which I'm incredibly grateful. And I'm, I'm learning in the moment that programmatic, programmatic advertising is apparently a brand new, very important thing, which doesn't surprise me, but that, that still, so, so I'm finding a, on, like I just Googled and found on Smart Insights, hey, this is a big thing. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be the way that, that most people are buying their ads in the next few years. Yeah. So great. I've learned that detail. What I still don't know is it seems like there's a bidding app platform that you as a marketer probably have access to and that you could bid for ads on your client's behalf. Obviously, if you're on the cutting edge and you're getting out there as like an agency and head of everybody else, then you get to, you, you get to, to be a consultant, a service-based company. Have you created your own technology? Are you working on it? We are, yes, we have created some and we are working on creating more. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we, our, um, what we're doing, or what we've done first is to really um, uh, what, uh, identify unique, well, I'll, I'll step back, which is that, you know, real, the real estate industry has a lot of data, um, all of which you, you, you know about. There's, there's web data, there's CRM data, there's all kinds of transaction data, um, there's municipal data, there's all kinds of great data in real estate. It's been used for many years to do a variety of different things. Right. Um, and you, got, you guys are pros, you've done this, and, and Robert, you're right to mention that this is not new in, in, in and of itself. Um, the idea of that data being uh, sort of 
so-called buzzword, you know, or, or term, you know, jargon word onboarded to the web for targeted advertising is a relatively new thing for the, for, for the category that, I, that I've found. Um, that is being able to source data, uh, find great data companies, great data partners um, that know a lot about consumers um, and when they might want to move and where they might want to move and marry that to their consumer habits and their life events. And then we sort of bring these profiles onto the web, create audiences, and then deliver them uh, relevant advertising, sort of right ad, right person, right time, right place. Uh, and and that's, what we've, that's what we've started to do. And then we um, are currently now, our product roadmap, you, you could say, is um, writing the algorithms that would decide um, when to serve those ads and to who, and then an underlying platform that would optimize the delivery of those ads. Um, so ultimately you get more targeted ads, uh, video ads, ads that could run on televisions, ads that can run on your phone, ads that could be converted into audio files so they could run on like Spotify um, or native ads. Uh, just about any ad format you can imagine would be delivered to someone in market at the right time, right place. So that is what we're, uh, we've started to build, you know, uh, Robert, uh, it's really been the data stuff. We have a lot of software building left to do. So, um, you know, we are, we're licensing where we need to, to be able to fulfill um, our real estate advertisers demands. Um, but what's unique about what we're doing so far is, is sort of um, uh, onboarding all that data, structuring it into really relevant uh, real estate audiences. And that's, that's hard to do and it requires specialization. I got you. I, I would imagine we're getting ready to go to break, but I have a follow-up question for those of uh, our listeners that, that stick with us after the break. Yes, cool. your, your, sense is, your sense is getting better about our breaks, <laughs> uh, Robert. You get a top prize for that. Uh, um, that's right, folks. We're going to go for our break. We'll be back. We'll uh, be delving more in this fascinating world of optimization and putting efforts at the right people at the right time. We'll be back in a few moments, folks. We're coming back. I'm in holiday mood. Robert looks right chirpy. Ed looks relaxed and confident. I think we're doing okay with this interview. We have to see though, but I'm getting a good vibe. Back to your follow question, Robert. You're in the right place for good vibes. So those listeners that missed the intro of our show, our dear Jonathan is out being a hippie in the middle of Mount Shasta. He hasn't really shown, told me why. But but he's 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 on holiday, which is usually my jam. But uh, I'm super super gra glad that you got a little travel in, John. So it's about time. Uh, so we're with uh, Ed Carey, who's the founder of Audience Town, and he is uh, an amazing. Well, he's talking about amazing advances in technology, which I believe that he is working on putting together a unique solution. That's what I've gathered so far. My question for you would be, Ed this is still in development, right? That's kind of the impression I'm getting. You're, you're working on it. Is that right? Well, we are in market. Um, we have, a, we have a, a, we have full capabilities and full service in market today. What we're working on is um, more unique software, building more of our software to sort of power the data. So we are, we're ready to go. We've got, uh, we've got lots of clients from different segments of the real estate industry. Um, they are targeting audiences in ways with their ads. They, they didn't know possible. Um, but, but what we are um, you know, raising money to do is to um, uh, build out more of the software. And really, it's the algorithm and it's the machine learning. It's all the, it's all the buzzword stuff. Um, but it's, that's real stuff. And you guys know that. It is real stuff. And, you know, we have developers working on, on making the algorithms to decide who to show ads to, where and when. Um, but that, those pieces we are working on, Robert, that's, that's right. But we are, we are in full um, – full GA with uh, 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 good traction and, and good advertisers and showing good measurement. I'm happy to show, explain how that's done, how that all works today. Okay. So who might ask you to do that, but who is your, who's your primary target? Like who, so you've got a service, you've developed it. it sounds really cool. Lots of, lots of buzzwords. So who is your, who is your client? Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's a good question. I, and I would love to hear and talk with you guys a little bit about this as well, because we, um, you know, we, we talk and think and contemplate a lot about who our client personas should be with these products. And right. the, the, the team um, 
that, uh, that is here working on this at Audience Town. You know, most of us are advertising, digital media, ad tech, data people, um, you know, and we've learned a lot about real estate from clients and from working, but we have a lot to learn still. So, um, you know, we're, we're, we're pretty forthright about learning the category as, as, as we go. And, um, and, and, and I might start by saying that the, our products have been most useful for in-house marketing teams at large brokerages, builders. So we work with, I think, three of the top 10 national builders in the country. Um, a few listing brokerages that are trying to drive a lot of in-market activity to their sites, uh, their listing sites. Um, our client today has not been like an individual agent, just sort of like logging into our product building an ad and like delivering it. You know, there, there are good, really good companies doing that today. There's, there's a handful of them. Um, we are not doing that today. We've been uh, most useful where, you know, like an in-house marketing team has data to share with us. And that's a big part of the value proposition. So there are a lot of companies, um, the, the major brokerages that you all know, um, and then very large, you know, publicly traded builders and multifamily companies that have huge, huge CRM customer files, emails, you know, and they're onboarding them to our platform and then finding customers through our platform with ads that appear on mobile phones, ads that appear on uh, computers, uh, audio ads, video ads that run on YouTube, highly targeted. Um, so that, that's, been our, that's been our customer. Uh, to date. Okay. Well, um, I want to discuss, you know, your, your recent article in uh, Ingman and you, you presented a couple, you had a couple of conferences, Ed, and you caused a bit of controversialism. You've been quite scathing in some ways about the industry at the present moment. I, would you agree with that synopsis I've just outlined and maybe you would give us um, uh, insight of your, your latest presentation and where you think the industry is at the present moment. Yeah, no, that's, uh, uh, that's, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, I was, um, so I was interviewed by Craig Rowe of Inman, uh, and, and, you know, and he was asking me about what, you know, what I thought about the state of advertising, the real estate industry. And I, I shared with him, uh, from my many years working in the industry, competing with and integrating with big companies like Google and Facebook, what I, what I thought of it all. And uh, I definitely got noticed, um, and I'm glad it did. You know, I, I think what I've seen in the real estate category is that, you know, I said it's a large, it's a large advertising category, and most of the money goes to just a few companies. There's a high concentration of ad spend on Zillow, Google, and, and Facebook, which seems to be where almost all of the money goes. And, you know, I, I sort of point out to our customers, and I pointed out in that article that, you know, there's, um, there's a lot of... Um, uh, um, I, I would say questioning by very large advertisers outside of real estate about the, the, the value and the safety of some of those ad platforms. And, you know, uh, Facebook is, has uh, had, had, a, had a lot of problems um, from Cambridge Analytica, which forced them to, you know, they removed their, their, their mover targeting because of that scandal, if you recall, last August. You can't target likely to move uh, and tenders on Facebook because um, you know, they had been they had been reselling their their data to third parties like that, and you know there's a, a lot of very large marketing brands that started to question their advertising investments in Facebook. Um, you know the brand association of it, their usage is actually beginning to decline a little bit. Instagram, of course, remains popular, but there's a lot of questioning about about Facebook. And then you know Google is a company that. Um, you know, also gets a lot of the real estate advertising uh, money as it does a lot of categories and search is one of mankind's greatest products. But nonetheless, you know, Facebook and Google uh, operate by sort of grading their own homework, which, which is the term that means. Yeah, I do, I do, I've, I've got to admit, I really like that, uh, grading. I, I love, did you think of that phrase, actually? I, I, I quite... No, I, I wish I did. I'm just borrowing all of the scripts from like Madison Avenue, and I'm, and I'm, I'm now sharing them with, with your audience. But, you know, you give them a ton of money. And look, Zillow's a little bit like this, too. They're very powerful and their products are very good. So who am I to say anything different? I'm, you know, just, just a, a guy here sitting in, in New Jersey saying these things. But, 
you know, these are companies where you give them a lot of money and, and, and just like Zillow, you know, takes all the money from the premium advertising community and then doesn't give back reporting, audience insights. You can't connect your core customer file to the Zillow results. Same thing, Google, Facebook. So you give them a ton of money, they run ads. The ads probably work. I mean, they do. I, you, know, you can't really deny some of that, but you can't get a lot of reporting, specifically attribution. Um, you specifically, you don't know, you know, Google wants you to think and Facebook want you to think that every product in the world sold um, is because of you, their platforms. Can you tell audience what you mean by attribution? Because that's... Att a yeah, sure. No, by attribution, it means, um, you know, if, uh, if someone goes to Google and types in one, two, three Main Street uh, house and they find that listing and then they click on it and then they get a showing and then they buy the house, Google would say, we delivered you that lead. We did that. You know, it was because of Google that you sold your house. S simple, simple example. And you might say, oh, it's because I, I advertised on Google that I, that I sold that house. Um, and so Google will be able to take credit for that um, because someone just typed in a search bar that they were looking for that house. When in reality, people make up their minds about real estate over a, a journey of many months and many life events. Google did not make someone buy a house, but Google will, via the reporting, say, oh, it was because you advertised with us that you sold the house. Zillow will say, oh, it's, it's because you advertised with Zillow that you sold the house. When in fact, like I just sold my house, um, the people who found my house, um, you know, they, had been, they, had, they had searched for 35, 35 houses over a course of 18 months and they decided to buy my house. So did Zillow bring that buyer to me? I mean, maybe they did, but um, they don't deserve Zillow full attribution for selling my house. But the way they position is that, uh, you know, they did. And so, you know, if that would be fine if these companies reported back to customers, um, you know, how, how attribution works. So in advertising, it's called attribution. Did the advertising you spend money on actually sell your products and services? Uh, or not. And they, they will say that they did it all and they grade their own homework and they'll say, oh, here's the report uh, that I sent you and I did a great job for you. Yeah, thank you for that. You did a great job there, actually. Um, actually, um, I'm going to throw over to Robert. Over to you, Robert. Well, I will say this, Ed. You and I, like the world that you come from, is kind of the world that I was in before I started my own marketing media company. And the strange thing was, is that I wanted to be out of the real estate vertical. I, I was already in it from 2007. And you, if being a really experienced advertising exec yourself, you know, as well as I do, the product or the service that you're doing, however you're deciding to advertise it, you probably can do whatever you want it once you know what you're doing on the web. The question is, as an entrepreneur or you know, like, where do you rest your hat? And you saw the same thing I saw, which is you looked at real estate and you said, wow, that industry is wildly underserved and it's huge. It's gigantic. And you're saying some things that, that I really love the way that you're talking about the stuff that you're talking about though. I do think it's a, it's like for the, for the people that we seek to engage, I don't know how, like, like for them, it might be a little bit too high level, mostly in the sense that, and I'm not audience, I'm not talking down to you. I'm just saying that yeah. some, of these, some of these questions like. No, like, I, I totally agree with you, but I, what I think we're, uh, we're getting to the crux of it. Um, and we've been having this conversation ongoing, actually, Ed. I feel we've been having this conversation ever since Robert came on board as my co-host. And it really delves into this, really, Ed. What is a lead? Yeah. Um, and it, it's in the eye of the beholder to some extent, isn't it? Um, I see um, that you get the attention of a possible prospect. And through different morphologies, you keep yourself to some extent in the attention of that probably that prospect in the hope that when they're in this home buying home selling process that you describe that you're going to be one of the legitimate people that they might approach 
and that's what effective advertising can probably do but other people would say they want somebody in the next week in a particular area that's going to buy a property or sell a property they yeah. would classify that as a lead first of all do you think i'm on the right i'm saying the right words or, or have i have i gone down the wrong route really what i've just said no no i i i, I don't think so i mean i think you know every industry has its own version of what a what a, what a success is with marketing and advertising, you know, in, in real estate, the term is, is lead. Um, other, other, you know, industries have terms like outcomes, sales, engagements, downloads. There's all different versions of what successful marketing and advertising sort of result in. Um, you know, and, and I, you know, I follow the sort of lead topic closely and, and, you know, I think the way, um, the way, it appears in real estate is that there is an awful lot of lead capture. You would, you would call it. There's a lot of just like, it comes flying at you. You, you know, you give Zillow money or you put, you spend money with Google, you know, you hope something just happens. You hope it comes at you and you buy it and you give, you know, as an agent, you might even give a huge referral fee commission away. If someone brings one to you, I mean, 20 or 30%. Um, but to get a lead in any industry, you know, you have to also develop brand, you have to develop exposure. It typically requires at least seven to 10 advertising and marketing exposures to a consumer for them to decide to do anything. So how does a lead come in? They don't just wake up and decide they wanna see your house and plug it in Zillow or plug it in Google or, or, or they see it on Facebook and respond. You, know, you have to show ads over time across channels, including email, including out of home, including um, you know, um, um, uh, digital, and um, then that could influence them to become a lead. So, you know, leads happen through a sort of process and a journey that you have to take consumers down, and that requires, um, you know, other marketing and advertising tactics. And so, I mean, our, our sort of thesis is that if you can make advertising and marketing efficient, well-priced, and well-targeted, you can kind of do like targeted branding that will result in higher um, higher numbers of leads. And those leads could come in through Zillow. They could come into Facebook. They could come in Google. And we'll help, we're, we're gonna help drive the leads sort of into the funnel. So um, through d different channels and, 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 and formats. So you know, I think the lead thing is sort of, it is a, it's, it's hard in any industry to figure out how, where leads come from and what they really want and how to capture them. Right, we're going to finish off the podcast part of the show. Hopefully, Ed's going to stay on for another 10 minutes, um, which will be bonus content, which you'll be able to see on the Mel Wright YouTube channel. Um, Ed, um, how can people find out more about you and your company? Uh, well, thank you for asking. And um, it's all on our website, which is audiencetown.com. Right, that's my, great. The email is there, ed at audiencetown.com. Um, I think all of, all of our executive team's uh, information is right up there. Um, so audiencetown.com, edit audiencetown.com. If you agree, disagree, or um, just want to talk more, that'd be fun. Yeah, I'm going to ask Ed in the bonus content what he thinks of Zillow. And um, was he surprised with some of the response he got from the couple conference presentations that he did? Um, Robert, um, how can people find out more about you and what your company's up to? Well, guys, um, I am not like uh, I let my my website speak for me most of the time. I am going to say this, though. We've completed work on what I believe to be the best WordPress theme available. It's proprietary to me. I've done so many things on this that I, I can't even actually mention them on the show because there's just the list is too long. But you can own this site, which I've been talking about for a long time, and we've been working on it for a year and a half, two years, spent a lot of money and time on it. So now it's done. So if you want to learn more about that, you can come to the website. You can come to my site, uh, inboundrem.com, and you can schedule an appointment with me, and I'll show you what we've got. That's great. Um, we're going to wrap up the show now, folks. Like I say, you can watch the bonus content on the Mel Wright YouTube channel. We'll be back next week with another great guest like Ed, giving you insight to hopefully grow your real estate business, not only for yourself, but also your family, and get the success that you want. We'll be back next week, folks. Bye. 
So, um, Ed, um, I think one of the most intriguing companies is Zillow and um, highly um, great founder, great background, um, people that got respect. But in the same way, I sense that they, they've totally lost the plot in some ways. What do you think's going on with them, being that based on your um, experience and working with companies of that size? What do you think? Have you got any sense of what's going on? <laughs> no, it's, a, it's, it's a good question, and uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, th thanks for asking it. I, I agree. I think they're an extremely impressive company. It's amazing what they've been able to do, um, you know, love them or hate them. And, you know, Google and Facebook for the, the ad industry are the same way. You know, there's a lot of love for those products, a lot of hate for the way they operate. There's a lot of mixed opinions. Um, and, you know, Zillow seems to have that reputation in this industry. So, you know, it, it, it is amazing what they've been able to do. I went to the last Inman uh, conference um, in Las Vegas, and I learned uh, from their new CEO, Richard Barton. He's, he's a very impressive uh, entrepreneur that, you know, really the companies that um, optimized for the consumer experience using technology became wildly successful. And you see that even in some of the business, um, the business theories of Compass or Redfin, um, and then even some of the incumbents. Can I just slightly interrupt, um, I'm not being rude, but what does that really mean, the consumer yeah. experience? <laughs> I mean, I think, if you, I think it's a good point. I mean, the way I, I learned about it there, and I'm sort of just repeating some of what I, I sort of learned at that conference was, you know, it made it very easy for someone to just jump on their phone and find a house. Um, and then they made it very easy to do research on what their house might be worth. And then they made it very easy to just, you know, click a button and, and, and call an agent and, you know, start to transact as, as, as soon as they possibly could. Um, you know, before that, uh, before that platform existed, you know, you had to call an agent first and then the agent would go into the MLS and source all the listings and you know you were sort of at the mercy of what the agent disclosed to you so that was that was very disruptive and um, now it seems though that you know they now charge money from their 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 advertisers and then they use that money to um, then you know uh, fund other activities that then sometimes bully their their advertisers so you know, their, their, their client is the consumer. They make the consumer have a wonderful, you know, mobile phone app experience to get information quickly, easily, and accessible um, and, and free, free, by the way, free, like you don't have to pay for it. Um, but then they sort of, um, you know, they make it very hard for their advertisers. And, you know, Google some, uh, operates somewhat of the same way with their advertisers. A lot of their biggest clients, like WPP, they spend you know, billions and billions of dollars a year with, with Google, they don't like that, but they have to do it. It's a must buy. And, and you can do that when your product is that good and you have, you know, the consumer as your master. Um, so it's been fascinating to see what, the, what, what they've done. Um, it's a pretty tried and true, like West Coast tech strategy, optimize for the consumer, make them just love your product through design and ease of use and easy path to purchase. And then the companies that didn't do that, you know, just, just if they optimized, I, Inman they were talking about is like, hey, if you've been spending the last 10 years optimizing for, for, you know, agents to make more money on their commissions, you're probably not worth as much as the companies like Zillow that just focused on consumer experience. So that, I, that, that was a big insight I had, um, you know, but, but meanwhile, everything I hear from, from clients of ours is that, you know, Zillow um, and, and their portfolio of companies make it hard to do business with them sometimes. And, and a lot of agents that I meet and I, I read about are really worried about Zillow's intentions. Um, but what choice do they have? Well, I suppose to try and utilize um, Facebook, other more kind of independence and also um, to build their own local brand, really, and maybe with the help of Mel Riot and what Robert provides uh, might be... Um, a more medium to long-term strategy. But um, before I bring Robert back in, um, I just don't understand Zillow. Though. Um, in some ways, you know, they're charging people 
to get the leads, and then they charge extra to clean the leads, and then yeah. they offer another side where they're direct competitors of the people that you're actually selling the leads to. It, it, it really seems, is it just driven in a way that they are publicly traded company and they just got to try and make more money every year and because of that basic facts they start doing things which can be destructive to the core of the company in a way i, I think it's a good question and i you know i, I mean I, I would say they sit around in meetings just like just like google does i'm i'm bashing on google i use google i mean you know these aren't yeah you know, i mean you know just but you know where it's like hey we are so powerful I actually don't care what my advertisers think and what are they going to do? I mean, that's how these, that's how it's like to sit in the product meetings of these companies. They're so powerful. They've really gotten the consumer, you know, there's top of mind with consumers. You know, when you think real estate, you go to, you go to Zillow, maybe you go to Trulia, I don't know. Um, and that's how these companies think. I think it is driven by shareholder value. Why even go to realtor.com? Unlikely, but you might do, would you? Maybe. Um, I, I think realtor.com is great. I mean, it, I mean I think, I've been so cool English no, I, 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 I love realtor.com. I, you know, and, and so if anything, it goes to show that, you know, there, there aren't as many options for agents. You know, maybe they can go to realtor.com, which doesn't have nearly the traffic of, of, of Zillow, but I, I, think is a, is a, is, I think is a great experience. Um, maybe they would use Redfin. Maybe they would go to an independent listing site. But um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I think they, they, you bring up like Redfin. Like, they don't uh, have options. You bring. You just brought up Redfin. That's another company that I don't fully understand. It seems that another yeah. business that got enormous amounts of um, VC funding that has, in some ways, really lost its way. It's got. It gets fantastic. Um, customer satisfaction um, ratings, but a company that really knows where it's going. I, I think in some ways what I've said about Zillow applies to Redfin. Would you, what's your thoughts about that? Yeah, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not an expert on the Redfin platform. I haven't used it personally in, 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 my, in my life. Although I do hear, you know, some, some of their direct competitors like Rob Refkin at Compass and um, you know, Josh team at Keller Williams. I mean, these guys speak very highly of Redfin, uh, their technology, their consumer experience. So I, I don't know what it is, but they seem to be doing, some, doing something really right. And, and, and I, what I am interested in is that is the model of like, they have, you know, employee agents and, um, you know, the, the agents are not contractors. I, I, I've, well, I think, I think you just hit the bot. I think their strength is also their biggest weakness. Yeah. I, it's, I mean, and I'm fascinated by it because I think, yeah, I mean, it makes sense. Most companies that need to thrive these days will say to themselves, this is how Zillow thinks and you know, the guys from Redfin is like, data is going to power everything we do, call it artificial intelligence, I'll put all the buzzwords in there, but whatever they're saying, they're saying intelligence because of data will allow us to connect with consumers quicker, faster, cheaper, and the consumers will enjoy our brand better. So to manage data, you have to do it from the center of the hub. You can't have all these independent agents managing their own data and technology stacks in the future. I, I'm, I'm trying to sort of get to the head. I, I could be wrong, and Robert, maybe you have a different opinion. But And so they're saying, hey, let's just act like a regular company and we'll have employees and there will be fewer of them but they will be paid decently paid and they'll be very good service and education providers and they're going to use all the tools of the company i mean you know i've worked for companies and you know you use the products that the company provides they pay you you deliver a service and you have a goal and if you don't hit it you get fired it's it's a fairly traditional model and i i i admire that there's there that model exists probably because of data and technology, which has to be managed by the, the enterprise and not the, not, not, not the agent entrepreneur, so to speak. So I don't know if it'll work in the end, but you know. It's, oh, I think, uh, I think it, it is successful to a certain minority of the end user that's looking for not a totally discount um, brokerage, but wants a more discounted, more um, package. But because of that, it has its own weaknesses, which yeah. is seen because really Redfin, it, you know, it's burnt through a lot of its VC money. And I just don't see, um, when it comes, I'm, I'll put Robert out. Robert, have you got a question? No, I have comments, but not questions. I mean, I, mean, I, don't, I, I don't have 
questions. I have I have some insight in terms of Redfin. They're they're a, they're a darling because they've got a better tech team than than a lot of these other guys do. That's why rolling out technology at the at the level that we're talking about, Zillow's still pulling in a loss, guys. That's why there's all this fuss about what they're doing and how they're doing it. And the reason for that is that I don't think that the layperson understands the complexity of an incredibly large platform in terms of, do you have any idea what the cost is to get Zillow to perform well for SEO in every single market in the US? Like that alone is probably hundreds or thousands of people and, and some, some AI like Ed's talking about, like it's probably a large combination of software development, human resources that are physically checking the software development. And that's just one department of this company. And these are not, like, these are not people, and I have, like, they're just not people that have taken the route to, these are MIT grads, you know, with- with, Thousands of them, like armies of engineers. I mean, it's just tens of thousands of Google. I mean, it's incredible firepower. Yeah, Right, exactly. So the the kind of level that we're talking about, guys, is just, and and the the lay person, our audience and the audiences, they don't, they don't, they don't get it. Like I need an eight person team to build a WordPress staff that by, by technology standards is very simple. It really is by, by the greater standards of technology. Uh, There's a lot. I understand what you're up to. I just want to finish off. Yeah. We've had a, we've had a little bit of a slight, this, this finish off compass. Let's finish off with compass. eh? Compass. What, 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 what what is their business model and why have they um, got, do so much written um, things said about them, controversialism. What, yeah. What's your take of Compass? Ed? Yeah, my, my take is, and take everything I take with a grain of salt. So, you know, because as I can't, and I've, and I've you seem I've, a very I've, friendly, you know, more okay, insightful right. individual. Here's, what, so I okay, ask perfect. Here's what I think I think they have a, a classic um, software technology strategy, which is you, you, you sell a lot of vaporware. You talk all about your technology that you don't have. Get it, you get investors jumping out of their seats when the markets are very strong and you get investors from Japan and Saudi Arabia and you get these guys to be like, this is amazing. And then you, another business model thing is you, you know, they equitize their employees, which is different. And that's another employee business model compensation thing. And so they get all these people, I've talked to a bunch of these people, I'm like, is it different? They're like, it's the same exact company as every company I've ever worked at. People have worked at 20 years at the big legacy brokerages. And they're like, but one day this stock is gonna you know, liquidate and I'm gonna make some money. And, and they, on, the, on the back of the vaporware, they're gonna, you know, they hire, they have like the best machine learning data scientists in the world to Robert's point. They're building up a campus up in you know, the Pacific Northwest with Microsoft's guy. They are going to build amazing technology very soon. And, and then they're going to roll it all up into a fabulous, and then they're going to IPO still on the hype. The IPO will get them hundreds of millions of dollars more or a billion or whatever. And then they're going to build awesome technology. And then the vision is, you know, you take everything over. I mean, this is, this is how Microsoft built their company. It's like hype, hype, like a lot of software, like Oracle. It's like, talk it up, get it in, we're doing this. And then they, they, they design their technology based on adoption. You don't build all this stuff to Robert's point. You don't get 10,000 engineers build a piece of software and nobody uses it. You talk about it, you capitalize it, you get a bunch of employees. And then if people think like, oh shit, this is good. Boom, then you build it. And then uh, I think it's a pretty classic strategy and it's, it's gonna work in the end, I think. I mean, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Um, it's fascinating to go to these events and p- people seem at the, at the agents seem to think that compass is this sort of like, you know, it's like the man you love to hate. Remember that old, uh, that old, that old actor, you know, and it's just, they love to hate these people, but, um, you know, I, I, they're disrupting things. And I, I think it's cool. You know, it's, um, you know, dis- disruption, I, you know, we'll see, but I think that's the strategy. I thought you put that lovely, actually. You're going to have to come back, Ed. Yeah. And, uh, you have to I come back. You. You're a favourite already, Ed. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I just love that. Uh, thank you for spending time with us. We're going to wrap up this part of the show, folks, or the last part of the show. Uh, I don't want to get Ed too worried because he spent too much time with us already. Um, Ed, thank you so much for being our guest. You like to say you have to come back. And we'll be love back it. next week, folks. See you soon, folks. Thanks, Bye. Thanks, Robert. Yeah, it was a lot of fun, man. A lot of fun.